Hello, everyone. How are you all doing today? I'm so excited for this opportunity. Um, hello, Andrea and Kirsty. It's so good to see you. It feels like it's been forever. Um, and Mary, thank you so much for having me and Donna and everyone. Um, so excited. So today the topic is conscious self-awareness. And um, how many kind of know, I'd love it if you would turn on your cameras because it is gonna be interactive if you have access to it. Um, if it's just a no and I get it, if you're eating your lunch, how many are working today? If I can just see an electronic hand or raise your hand, how many are working today? All right, got a few of you. Are you on your lunch hour? Well, thank you so much for joining during your busy day. Really appreciate it. Um, and you can you can lower your hand. Um, so just to get started on conscious on the topic of conscious self awareness, how many of you just raise your hands or show a hand um, know what that is and practice it. Just raise your hand, kind of, a little bit. Not seeing too many hands here. So <laughs> this is great, this is perfect. Um, so you're in for a treat. I'm just gonna go over the basics. So if you're kind of in a place where you're not really sure something, you just know something is, is there to change or shift, and you're on the edge of something, you wanna take your business to the next level, you wanna have more fulfilling relationships, but you're just not sure. You have these blind spots. You think you're doing everything right, but there's something just in your way. So when we have this conscious awareness, then we tend to see the blind spots and open up to them. And we, once we bring that to consciousness, all of these little blind spots, because we don't know what we don't know, right? So when we bring this to consciousness, then it's just a light bulb goes off and like, oh, then we can make a choice. So to start out, um, I am going to just go through a few slides to explain what conscious awareness is. I'm gonna share my screen. Can everyone see the slides? Yeah, okay, bring this up. Oh, and I didn't introduce myself. <laughs> so I am Christina Cece, and I am a holistic well-being coach. And I help women create the life of their dreams through three levels. That's the mind, body, and the soul. Um, this is some of my work, bringing conscious awareness to people's lives and an understanding, but I'm also a co-facilitator for um, Tina Brigley Coaching and a co-facilitator for this 90-day program to kind of bring your career, your life to the next level. And I'll share a little bit about that at the end. Um, but I'm also a cacao ceremony facilitator, and that's my, where my passion is, and I love to see the transformation when people attend these ceremonies. So thank you all. And so what is conscious self-awareness? It's really the key to any transformation or shift. There are two types of conscious awareness. So we have the internal. The internal is how we clearly see our own thoughts, emotions, desires, feelings, and how we view ourselves in the world. The external is just an understanding of how we see others, how we see situa different situations, our surroundings, and how others see you. So your awareness of how others see you. So how many of you, I'd love to, I'd love to have this kind of an open space where you can share. And I'm just going to stop sharing here. How many of you um, understand what this external self-awareness is and 
What's an example in your life of how you do that, how you practice it? Just raise your electronic hand or your hand. Let's see, electronic hand would work better because then I can see everyone. Anyone, anyone? Okay, Chris, Christy, just unmute yourself. So it's really interesting that you asked this question of like how people externally see us. It's something that has come up for me recently, realizing that the way people see me is completely different from the way I see myself. So to answer your question, I don't exactly have an example for myself right now, because like you said, you don't know what you don't know. Right. Yeah, I'll that's echo great. that. That's great. I was like trying to think of an example and I couldn't. And that's why it took me a minute to like, I can't think of an example. So I'm going to echo exactly what Christy said. Do any of you have children? I have three. Okay. So one thing, especially a mother, I'm not a mother. I'm a, I'm a cat mom. So, <laughs> but one thing that moms tend to do is put a lot of focus on their children. So you're, I'm sure you're very aware of when your children are, want something to eat. You're very aware of when your children have to be at school. So that's a form of external awareness. They don't have to tell you, you're just aware of it, right? Yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, so we tend to focus more on the external than we do the internal. So that there's a little bit more to this. So you really do need the internal to help dictate the external. And I'll get into that a little bit. Anyone else like to share? Okay. <laughs> One. Okay, so going again, the internals, how we see our own thoughts, our emotions, our desires, our feelings, because we run through the day and we don't even notice half the time. We're so busy with the kids, with the job, with the business, running here and there. We're on autopilot most of the time. Oops. Come on. Let's see. There we go. Okay, so these internal thoughts, internal awareness brings us to the narratives that we tell ourselves. So most people are externally self-aware, placing a lot of their focus on other people outside of ourselves. So we then form narratives subconsciously to support how we perceive how other people are viewing us. So the way we think about ourselves ultimately is how we believe other people think of us and how they view us. These stories begin to run our lives and shape who we are and our identities. So both the external and the internal self-awareness are really, really important. Yet it's focusing on this internal awareness that will help shape your external awareness. Does that make sense? Does anyone have any stories that they can know of that, that maybe have popped up, any narratives that you tell yourself on a daily basis, on, in a moment, who would like to share? I, I don't really, like for me, it's a little bit, I don't care what anybody thinks about me. <laughs> so I don't know if, that's, if that makes sense or if that's something, but I've learned to not care. It's I do what, you know, as I want to do. And you can think of me whatever you want because that doesn't really matter to me. And I think I've learned that. And, and, and that's not something that I was before. I've learned that <laughs> through many years 
of caring what people thought. <laughs> so I just mm-hmm. learned not to care anymore and just do what I love and do what I do and be myself. And if you want to think of me this way, your perception of me is your perception of me. It's not the way I perceive myself. So I've learned that. And that's just, again, not something that happened overnight at all. It's something that happened through many years of working on myself. Sure, sure. So it sounds like you um, you really have started to focus. So you probably do have, have had some work and internal awareness. So the thoughts that you have about yourself. So we're going to do a few exercises to kind of show um, what the thoughts we are really thinking, because a lot of the time we're just moving so quickly through life and through our daily lives, we don't even know what we're thinking. And there's uh, a few times a day where these thoughts are more apparent and you can see them a little bit better. And I'm going to go into that. So share this again. Okay, so the exercise is just noticing your thoughts. There are two key times of day when our brains are in a lower brain frequency in the alpha state. And that's in the morning when you're first waking up. So when you're first waking up, you're still groggy. It's called the hypnagogic state. Just sit for a few moments and just notice the thoughts. Notice how your body is feeling. So first thing in the morning, it's like, oh, are your thoughts? I have to get up and get the kids ready. I have to get up and, oh, they have to be at school at this time. Oh, I have a meeting at... 8 a.m. I've got to get, I've got to prepare for that meeting. Are those your thoughts? Or is it, I am so excited for the day. I am feeling so great today. Or somewhere in between. But it's just a noticing. That's all it is. It's not to fix it. It's not to avoid it. It's just a noticing. And then the second time of the day is before you go to sleep. So before you go to sleep, it's just in that groggy state. Just notice what your, where your thoughts are. Are you replaying events from the day? Maybe some arguments you had. Just notice. Oops. I'm going to stop sharing this. Okay, now can anyone tell me any thoughts before they go to bed at night, your body's just kind of, your mind is stirring, your body's a little amped up. Anyone like to share? share I love being in alpha state. (laughs) That's one of my favorite. I don't like beta, which we are in every moment, but when I'm in my alpha state is when I actually do my manifesting and I've learned yes. that because I'm studying the silver mind theory. Yes. You're probably very familiar with that. that yeah, I'm yes. so deep into that book right now for mind control. So that has helped me actually to learn about alpha, beta. And when I'm in my alpha state is when I'm actually doing most of my manifesting. Yes. When you're in that in the morning, when I wake up and in the evening, if we're going to sleep is when I go straight to that. I can't wait. I actually look forward to going into that state. So that I can actually manifest and figure out my life <laughs> pretty yes. much in that state. So that's my experience with Alpha. Absolutely. So when you're in that state in the morning or the evening, do you notice any thoughts that are coming to you? Yes. Yes. So Absolutely. just uh, give a few examples of what you might be saying to yourself. <laughs> Um, and for me, when I'm in that alpha state, specifically in the morning, for some reason, that's when I'm the most creative. And that's when most of my ideas that I put into place here at Bloom or I come up with or anything that I do that's related to my life, whether personal or work related, all happen in that state. <laughs> it's really weird, but they're all in that state. And then when I'm out of it, when I'm, it's already like a little later and then I'm, then I'm like in beta and then I'm more like okay, did I really think I can make that happen? Or is that really going to happen? Or is that crazy? And then I'm more realistic. 
And in that alpha state, I'm more dreaming about everything is possible. There's no nothing that's not possible in that state for me. Absolutely. So this is a really great example um, of how you can create your day. So when we're waking up to these thoughts of, um, oh, I have to get up for work. I have to get the kids ready. I have to do this. I have to do that. That shapes your day. Mm -hmm. That's the lens that you're going to see through. Mm -hmm. So when you can be in this day, and this is, we're getting a little bit advanced here, <laughs> but, um, but when you're in that state, it is the opportunity to create. Yes, for sure. So what I'd like to do at this time, anyone who's not driving, <laughs> I'd like to do a little grounding exercise. So in this grounding exercise, we are actually going to bring our brains into this alpha state. So this state does not have to be at these two times. Um, you can do it through meditation. You can do it when you're doing the dishes, the dishes, any mundane um, exercise, any mundane practice, you're doing the laundry, you're doing your dishes, that puts your brain into the alpha state. So then you can start to notice what the thoughts are coming up. Because when we're in beta, like she was talking about, this higher or faster frequency of the brain, then we're just, you know, we're just a churning, you know, machine here. That's all it's doing. Mm -hmm. We're trying to survive through the day. So if I can ask you to just feel the seat beneath you, place your feet flat on the floor, your spine straight, closing your eyes. We're going to take four deep breaths, inhaling through the nose and exhaling through your mouth with a count of four. So inhale through your nose, one, two, three, four, and exhale through the mouth, two, three, four. So you're inhaling, filling the belly with oxygen, expanding the lungs through the nose, and exhale it all out, the count of four. And again, inhale, expanding the belly, expanding the lungs, and exhale through the mouth, letting it all out. And one more time, inhaling. At the top, we're gonna hold it for four counts. And on your exhale, just releasing with a sigh, <sighs> letting it all go. And keeping your eyes closed, I'd like you to place your focus on your spine. <clears throat> just envision your spine as it extends from the top of your neck, the base of your skull, all the way down to your tailbone. As you see the spine, start to envision it turning into a column of light. And this column of light is getting brighter and brighter in whatever color you may see. Continuing to breathe in your natural rhythm, seeing this light grow brighter and brighter. Now placing your focus on your tailbone, as you see the end of this light extending, it extends through your legs and down through your feet as it grows longer and longer. This light goes through the floor 
and through the building or structure, wherever you are, into the surface of the earth. Seeing this light extending further down as it goes further into the earth toward the center. Still breathing, taking a breath. As this light comes upon the center of the earth, the crystalline core, a beautiful red, fiery magenta. And your light wraps around this core tightly as you feel secure and grounded and supported by the earth. Taking an inhale and an exhale. Feeling the support of the earth. Continuing this light moves up through the layers of the earth. Back through the surface of the ground. Back through the structure or building where you're in. Through the floor through your feet, through your legs, and back to your spine, your tailbone. Taking a breath, inhale, placing your hands on your heart center in the center of your chest. Taking another breath, inhale, and exhale. And when you're ready, open your eyes. Good. How are you all feeling? A little relaxed? Very. <laughs> yes. Good. Good. Feeling supported, feeling a little more grounded. It felt like it took like a little cat nap. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. Okay. So let's move on. Share my screen here again. Okay. Mirror work. How many of you today have access to a mirror? Maybe there's a private bathroom where you are. The mirror. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> not right, not with me, but I mean, I'm home. I work from home, so I definitely. Actually, I have a mirror in front of me. What am I talking about? My my closet door is a mirror. <laughs> I didn't there you even... go. <laughs> there you go. Even if you're in the car, if you're not when you're driving, <laughs> but if you're parked, you can still look in the mirror. You're by yourself. So I'd like you to take some a few moments. Um, why why are we doing this? Why do we do mirror work? Let's talk about that first. What's the purpose? So it brings awareness to the feelings, the thoughts, emotions of being with yourself intimately. to develop self-love, self-care, and create more meaningful relationship with others and yourself. Now, this might be a little confronting. Oops. Come on. This might be a little confronting, but I have a challenge for you. <coughs> I'd like you to stand or sit in front of the mirror for just 10 minutes and just look at yourself, hold a gentle eye gaze and just really see yourself. How many times do we look in a mirror throughout the day, but yet we don't actually look at ourselves? We look at what we're wearing. We look at how our hair looks. 
We look at our lipstick, but we don't actually see our set. I'm in, I'm in. All right, so those of you who are participating, um, even if you're not participating, I challenge you to do this at home when you have some time. We're gonna go on just a few more slides here. Because I'd like you to notice if you have um, something that you can write on, a notebook, just notice how you're feeling. Do you feel a heaviness in your chest? Do you feel like you're going to well up? Do you feel joy? Do you feel love for yourself? Do you feel nothing? Do you think this is stupid? Do you get angry? Just notice, just notice. And those of you who don't have your cameras on, if you have a mirror available, please participate. Because this is just a noticing. This is for no one else but yourself. To bring up those feelings and those thoughts. So if you're like most people, you'll feel a little uneasy, awkward, embarrassed, maybe a little emotional. You may start to see patterns of self-loathing and criticism. And it's just a noticing and that's normal to feel uneasy because the mirror reflects back to us any feelings that you have about yourself. It makes you immediately aware where you're resisting and where, can't read that, can't remember where you're open and flowing. It clearly shows your thoughts. You will need to change if you want to have a joyous, fulfilled life. So what are your thoughts? beating yourself up, saying this is stupid, she's crazy. What are the narratives? Write them down. Oops, we'll come back to that. Oops. Okay, so I'm gonna start the clock. Okay, welcome back everyone. Coming back. Who would like to share their experience? Donna, just unmute yourself. Yep. Um, well, I will say that um, something that I think is probably good for all of us is the fact that we have cell phones and there's a lot of people taking pictures. So I think we're probably, I'm, I think I'm speaking for everybody because I know pretty much at least half the group. I see pictures of them <laughs> um, all the time. So you're aware, you know, that you're smiling more. And I do think that I smile more than I've ever done before. Um, you know, you want to, um, it's like you're projecting what you think everyone else wants to see as well. But you also, because I feel happier for whatever reason, um, that makes a big difference in the fact that you are almost, you're always going to examine yourself. You know, you're constantly, we're constantly doing that. Um, you know, this little, oh, I have a little spot over here. It looks like it's different. You know, the things that I just, you know, came up with with the lines and why can't like, why can't they do a surgery like this? You know, <laughs> all the, all the yes. And I'm so glad I don't you need brought a whole facelift. I just need this, you know? Yes. <laughs> Yes, but see um, how we're those stories that we're telling ourselves, right? And that's just the surface. So mm -hmm. I know 10 minutes is kind of a long time um, to be doing this. This is a practice, but it gets you to that place to notice what's happening after it starts to get uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I, I was very nice to myself. I have very, very pretty green eyes. So Good. that's... Pretty much good it. for you. Good for you. Good. And who else wants to share? 
We'll go so, Kirsty and then and then uh, Mary. Okay. After hearing what Donna had to say, I realized I didn't smile once. I just like kept the same expression and I looked tired and I just kept commenting on how my skin was like looking awful, different than usual, just low vibe, low frequency. I had a reggae song that wouldn't stop going in my head. So it was like, it was a very loud experience for me. Very good. Very good. And go ahead. I didn't do the full 10 minutes, so I'm not going to lie to you, <laughs> but I did do the, for like five minutes, I did start. And the first thought that came to mind was like, I have to do more face yoga. <laughs> I was just like, okay, I have to do more face yoga. And then I was like, I got to stop. <laughs> so. There you go. There you go. See the, <laughs> the, that five minutes, your body was starting to tell you something. Your body was saying, okay, we can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's a noticing. It's just a noticing. If you get bored, if anyone else had done it and you get bored after two minutes, what is that saying? That's, that's There's an avoidance there yeah. of being intimate with yourself. I don't think that I've ever looked in the mirror until today when you told me to do it. Honestly, in my whole life, I think I, of course, look in the mirror, fix my hair, and but actually look in the mirror to, to look at myself. I think I've never done that. Yeah. And a lot of people don't. So, yes. and this is a practice. Um, I'm going to share another slide here. Uh, where did it go? Well, maybe not. <laughs> I don't know what happened to it. Um, I was messing around during the break and... Let's see. Well, basically, the last, um, well, I do need to find it because I have a few more things here. Um, here it is. Okay. Here we go. Oops. Okay, so what meaning am I giving this? Look at what you wrote down, look at the thoughts or, or the feelings from your session and just ask yourself, what meaning am I giving these thoughts? What meaning am I giving these emotions, feelings and sensations? Because it's not what you imagine it to be. It's not what you think it is. We create the meaning. So, whoops. Does that make sense? <clears throat> that understandable? Yeah? Do you, can you see? So this, do I, I need to do more face yoga. <laughs> so what meaning are you giving that? Maybe it's, I just don't look good enough. I don't look young anymore. I don't, I'm seeing my wrinkles. So I have to fix it. <laughs> Believe me, I, I do the same thing. <laughs> I just turned 50, well, October, I turned 52. So <laughs> I do the same thing. <laughs> So, but we're meaning making machines. Our brain is a meaning making machine. And it always wants to have some sort of context. But we create the meaning. It doesn't mean that it's true. And it's the part, the beginning part of this exercise of bringing this to your awareness is just to notice and see how you're making meaning of things. Because it's really eye opening. I don't know if anyone has heard the story about the kids in the play in the playground. Well, I guess they're a little bit teenagers in the playground, right? In the schoolyard, and there's a group of girls, and um, they're just talking together after school. And the, you know, there's some boys hanging out too. And one boy, you know, he wants to go over and talk to the girls. So he's walked, you know, walking over, all cool and everything. And the girls start to giggle. 
Well, he turns around, he's like, oh my gosh, they're laughing at me. And he turned around and he went the other way. He went back to where he was. And the girls, they were just laughing. There was no meaning, but he created a whole story around that simple act that wasn't true. And this is what we do. So that is it for the presentation. Would anyone like to um, share anything, any highlights that they got out of it? Um, what they're taking away? Definitely got to look in the mirror. <laughs> I definitely want to do that exercise fully um, and see what comes out of it. That's it's my biggest takeaway for sure. Good. It's very, very powerful. The 10 and minutes wasn't as long as I thought it was going to feel, by the way. I, great. It, yeah. Amazing. Because, you know, I initially I was thinking I was going to dread it after, you know, five minutes would be enough to to look at yourself. But um, it wasn't, you know, it just wasn't as long. And it Good. made me think of there was a, I didn't finish reading it this morning, but Mary Jo Stormont had an, um, something on LinkedIn about self-esteem. And uh, I, I want to read it. It was looked like it was really long and it looked very interesting. But I started thinking about that because that's really what happens when you can you can look in the mirror and that can either increase or decrease. And it can happen in the morning can be totally different than at lunchtime and in the evening. Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And that just goes to show you what meaning we're giving it, because if it can change like that, right, it's not real. We're mm -hmm. just making that up. So um, just something else I'd like to share with you all. Just uh, if you'd like to get in touch with me. Here's my information. You can take a picture, of the screen or write it down. Thank you also, Christina. I don't know if you've joined Bloom. Make sure that you join Bloom. So that way, a lot of the ladies are already on Bloom. They can access you on their um, Bloom as well and connect with you and feel free to share some of your wisdom and your knowledge on there as well so that they can uh, be reminded of the value that you bring to, to Bloom. Thank you so much. And I, I definitely will join. Um, it just seems like a really amazing group. Um, so I just like to introduce this quiz that um, is really interesting and will kind of take this conscious awareness to another level. Um, so at Tina Brigley Coaching, we have this 90 day program and this cool quiz um, where you can find out your leadership personality. And this personality can be somewhat of your dominant operating system and how you look at life, how you show up during, in the world. Um, it supports you and how you can, uh, and, and shows you how you're holding yourself back. So um, it brings this conscious awareness to the blind spots mm -hmm. and provides some actionable, actionable steps on how to improve. So it's really fascinating. Um, I encourage you to just uh, try it out and um, you'll get a full report and some actionable steps on how to take advantage of your dominant and how to move into other personalities to, to make you more well-rounded. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so if we take the quiz, will you come back and help us with the quiz and kind of guide us? Or sure. will you, well, yeah. We can make this an exercise. Whoever wants to participate can take it and kind of post their results, I guess, or they, if they Absolutely. want to course on Bloom, and then you can come in there. And I think we should make this an exercise so that they can um, use it as a tool as well. Absolutely. I would love to do that. Okay. For sure. I just wanted to share, I have taken that quiz recently oh, yeah. and it blew my mind <laughs> of how <laughs> deeply it saw within my soul um, I actually made it the background of my computer screen so that I can look at it every day and be like, okay, these are the things that I need to be aware of 
and take action on. So yeah, yeah, I, I recommend it to everyone. Tina's been my coach. She's amazing. Yep. And yeah. Yep. And that's how Kirsty and I know each other. So through Tina's coaching. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Any resource that we can bring to the Bloom community is welcome, especially something that's going to help us grow um, personally with it, you know, personal or in our career. We welcome it. And um, I want to take it. So I'll definitely take it and I'll share my results on Bloom. <laughs> yeah, please do. And I have a gift for everyone. Um, I just put it in the chat. And that is the awareness factor PDF. It kind of gives you a little more detail and um, uh, a few more steps after after the mirror work. So oh, okay, good. Um, you that can just open work. up the link from here, have it on your um, in your search bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome because I'm gonna take that as homework. So anyone else take it as homework as well and also share with us after you did that exercise, share it on Bloom as well so we can find out how you feel and Christina can know more. <laughs> For sure. Well, thank you so much. And I really appreciate all of your attention.